Hey everyone, back with the excursion again because I don't think the degas bottle is supposed to have a crack in it like that. So we're gonna go ahead and replace it. It's also a little, um, it's a little dirty as well, as you can see. It, it hasn't, um, it hasn't been flushed in a while. So I've already got the coolant draining right into there. So while that's draining, I gotta wait a while. It takes a little bit. So I'm gonna kind of go over what the plan of operation is here, because we're not just replacing this. I'm also replacing the thermostat, which is right in, well, right down there. And I'm also going to go ahead and replace this hose. I don't think there's anything wrong with this hose, but I'm going to go ahead and put a new one on while I'm here. The hose was only like 15 bucks, and these are Rock Auto prices, mind you. Pretty much everything I say price-wise is Rock Auto price, unless I specify otherwise. But anyway, this is getting replaced, thermostat's getting replaced, and of course the O-ring, and then the degas bottle. So to get the degas bottle off the vehicle once you've drained all the coolant you disconnect this hose be careful not to break the plastic nipple off the tank into this hose that would be bad um, don't break that get this hose off there's a bolt right here and then there's just two bolts down there and then there's also a hose you can see it right right there my fingers out of the way you can probably see it better right there it connects to the bottom of the tank it's got a clamp on it you want to get that off then you can pull the degas bottle out of the vehicle also while i'm here thinking about it this hose runs around and it goes into the top of the radiator right there there's a little plastic nipple that that plugs into on the top of the radiator uh don't freaking break that because if you do you have to have a new radiator and the only reason I mention that is because if you are replacing this hose right here, it has to come off there. Don't break that plastic nipple that it plugs into or it, you will need another radiator because uh, that is all part of the top plastic tank bit of the radiator. So be careful of that. So then you can kind of do this whatever order you want. But once that's all done... You know, just pull these clamps off. You may have to twist this hose a bit to break the seal. Then pull it off. There's two bolts, one here, one on the other side, to hold this metal housing on. And that is where the thermostat is at. It just sits right down in this little cast pocket, if you will, right there. And it's got an O-ring that goes with it. And I ordered a new O-ring, of course. So it's really not hard to get any of this off and then to put it all back, just firm up your bolts on your degas bottle right over there and then just snug these down good on this metal housing and just make sure your clamps are past the little, uh, oh, what do you call it? On those, on the plastic nipples, barb. Make sure your hose is over the barb on the plastic nipple here that's on top of your radiator. Make sure your clamp is past that you can kind of feel there's a little bump right in there. But just do all that and get it clamped down and you should be good. That's if you're just doing basic replacement. I'm going to flush the cooling system because it's dirty. So the thermostat has to come out of here. Then I put the housing back. Then this hose has to come off. I put a garden hose in here. And then all of the... I'm sorry, brain fart... I put the garden hose in here, and then all the water comes out here. And so I'll route this hose kind of down, and it'll it'll just run off on the ground. This is just sitting here in the driveway, and a little bit of antifreeze water never hurt the driveway. And if any of you are concerned about, oh my gosh, what about pollution? Well, dude, if you had any idea the amount of chemical that is sprayed around here on crops, and the amount of chemical we spray on weeds in certain areas to kill them, Antifreeze is like the least toxic of all that. So I pollution, it's not really a concern. Plus, it's in the driveway. I don't want grass growing in the driveway anyway. So, oh, another thing, because I'm dumb, and I think I should mention, if you want to, if you want more room to maneuver and you don't want to get water all over your belts and stuff and you want to pull the fan off and take the fan shroud out, you can. Just keep in mind, the fan shroud will not come out until you take that fan clutch off. It looks like you can get it off. Trust me, you can't, unless you want to smash it with a hammer, but I wouldn't recommend that. So there are, well, there's like a bolt here and a bolt over on the other side. I mean, you'll find them. They're not hard to get to. That's why I like these V10s. They're pretty easy to work on. 
I'm just doing an overview of stuff so that people know kind of the little bitty ins and outs. But I'm not going to worry about taking any of this stuff off because I'm pretty sure I can route this hose right down through here past that power steering box. I can even get another, I got some sections of hose from some other stuff I could put on here and clamp on to really help guide it down out of the way. And if it gets a little bit of water on it, I mean, it's not going to hurt. It'll dry. I'll cook it out because I'm going to run the engine pretty good after I get all this done. So now I just have to wait for the coolant to drain. All right, got everything off. The supply hose right there there's the clamp that was on the bottom of the degas bottle. For some reason, they had the prongs on it facing the front of the vehicle. It was a little difficult to get in there and get it worked loose, but I got that off. I've got the hose all positioned how I want it. I think it's gonna flow pretty good. Now right down there, that foamy stuff, that's the crud that's coming out of the cooling system. It was definitely gross in there. I don't know if you can see there how brown that is. It's not clean, so, you know. Uh, got those clamps set aside for the new hose. And I don't think there's anything wrong with this hose, like I said, well, there might be now, because I had to get channel locks on this to work it back and forth and break it loose. Um, I still need to pull this off and pull the thermostat, which I should probably do before I get too far ahead of myself. I'm pull that thermostat out and then I'll shut the coolant drain off, I'll flush this, I'll open the drain back up to make sure all the water is out as possible, and then I will put everything back together, refill the system, and should work good. All right, now we're going to, we're flushing it, but it's kind of hard to stop it from doing that, so... It's just going to kind of do that because oh, there it goes. Oh, gross. Ew. Ew, ew, ew. Well, we'll just kind of oh, wiring harness loves water. It, it's fine. We'll cook it out. It'll be fine. That's not antifreeze colored though. So we're just gonna let this run until that's clear and then we'll uh, call her good. All right, everything's been thoroughly flushed. We are running a clear stream of water. It might be hard for you guys to tell on camera, but it's clear. I'm just draining all the existing water out of the system. It did, because I'm dumb, I forgot. It does end up coming out this hose you can direct that hose pointed down if you want. I just let it free flow like this. I'm not worried about it. And you might think, oh, but all that water in the engine and in the wiring harness. And it's like, well, look, here's the deal. If you ever wash your engine at the car wash, you're pretty much doing the same thing, which is scattering water all over the place. It's not going to hurt. It's supposed to be a warm day today. It's not supposed to freeze at all or very hard tonight. It might only be like 31 at the most. It was supposed to be warm for the next couple days. That's why I was doing it today. That way this thing had a good chance to really dry out and stuff um, before it starts turning cold again. So while I am waiting for all that to drain out, I'll go ahead and put the thermostat in there and the new hose across and get that all clamped down so it's out of the way. And then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so we have the new hose. There's your part number. It's a, it's a, I'm zoomed in. I can't show you here, but I'll show you when I get over there. And then here's the part number for the water outlet seal, which we'll show you all that in a minute. Got the thermostat itself right here. There we go. All right. Oh my goodness. All right. So there's two 10 millimeter bolts that hold this in. So, the thermostat just sits in. Awesome. Okay, a uh, quick interjection here, because I'm stupid and I forgot to mention this. Your thermostat has a side that should say to radiator. So, make sure that it's facing the right way. Because you've got like this little weep hole here. 
is supposed to be aligned a certain way so that stuff, you know, works like it should. So just make sure that, um, just make sure you point this the right way and line it up right when you're putting it in. Because I forgot to mention that until after I got done and had filled the cooling system already. It's not too bad to get in there and change it. All you have to do is drain some of the fluid out and take the housing off. But make sure your, uh, make sure your radiator's facing the, or your, not your radiator, your thermostat. Make sure that's facing the right way. It sits in there just fine. Put the seal in there. It sits just fine. And then you take your housing right here, which is by no means 100% clean. But you take your housing, put it on there like so. That should fit okay. It's going to compress that seal a little bit. Now put your bolts in. I don't know. Well, hang on. Let me not get ahead of myself here. Get those started. Now, when you tighten this down, you want to tighten it very evenly because if you're not careful, you'll crack the housing. Now, they sell replacement housings. You can get them, but firm it up as much as you can by hand and just do it evenly, even number of turns on both sides. Now, hopefully, when I took this out, I didn't strip the housing. So, torque spec on these is good enough. That's the torque spec. That's good enough. I think I... That's wrist tight, if you will. That's good. And that's good. That's about 20 foot-pounds. you got to be careful because this is all aluminum and if you strip it out you're going to play hell trying to get it back correctly to get anything to tighten up good but we're in there good grab it you can shake the vehicle it's not loose in there so that's awesome next step is to take your big channel locks and get your clamps set now these clamps are notched to where allegedly if you squeeze them together enough they will lock into place. But I'm not going to bother with that. Okay. Got that clamp on. Your hose, which hopefully you can see on camera, but you've got a shorter bend and then you got a longer bend. Your shorter bend goes on your thermostat housing. Oh yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. Then make sure it's twisted into the right spot shove it on the radiator after you put the other clamp on. Don't be dumb. Crap. Don't drop your channel locks either. And don't stick your hands on it in case it decides to uh, come loose. Alright. Now you can shove your new hose onto your radiator looking good let's make sure everything's good and straight now earlier I was talking about I don't know if you can see it on camera but right here there's this little bulge that's a barb that's on the housing and then there's a corresponding one on the radiator you want your clamp behind that barb so that way because the theory is if your hose was going to come off you'd pull on it towards the front of the car like on the housing here so if your clamp is gripping the hose here as you try and pull it it might start to move but it'll hit that barb and you, and you won't be able to pull it over that which you're never able to pull these damn hoses off anyway unless they're new and even then once they seal you know it's just not having it now see i'm having a lot of trouble getting it over that damn barb so i gotta go all the way here and that seems pretty good. I might straighten it up a bit. There. Well, that, that seems okay to me. Now we just do the front, which you probably can't see, but that's okay, because I'm having a hell of a time getting it to work, so... There we 
go. And then just make sure it's all good. And that. Now, if you lose these clamps, or if you don't like them, you might get tempted to use those screw clamps. I wouldn't, just because you don't need a lot of force to hold these hoses to the housings. You really don't, because there's not that much pressure in your uh, cooling system. There's not supposed to be, anyway. It's not supposed to be more than, like, 15 pounds. Uh, but you don't want to use those screw clamps, because on plastic nipples especially, if you tighten that down too much, you'll crack the plastic, and then you ruin your radiator. And you have to replace it. So as much as these are annoying, stick with them. These are not the worst ones to get to. Trust me, I've gotten to way worse. Oh, better reconnect the cylinder head temperature. No, that's the coolant temperature sensor. There's a separate one for the cylinder head temperature. But I disconnected that so I get the housing off easier. There we go. It's on good. All right, so now that this is on, we'll go ahead and put the degas bottle on next. All right, degas bottle installation. Once you've got your clamp back on your big hose down here, which I don't know if you guys can see it or not, I'm going to try and stay out of the way, but no promises. So on your degas bottle, you've got these two holes down here that take screws, remember? And then that one that sits up top. I can't show you behind the battery, so I'm just going to try and stay out of the way and get that stupid zip tie off here so everything fits and then we will progress all right first step shove the degas bottle into the hose Got to get it in there all the way now. It takes a minute. Okay. There. Now, once all that's done, you can take your little tiny screws. You can start that top one first. And then do the bottom ones. Now, remember that the bottom ones are longer then the top one, so you don't want to get them confused. And the reason you don't want to tighten everything down right away is because if you need a little extra room to maneuver this thing around to get all your bolts started, you can do that. Getting the hose uh, started you can clamp it down if you want. The way that this was sitting originally, the little prongs on the clamp were facing the front of the vehicle. What I did was I took the degas bottle loose, then I kind of shoved it back, and that allowed me to get on that clamp and get it off the hose or down off the hose enough that I could pull the old bottle off. You can do that, reverse of that, to install the new one. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is shove the hose on, tighten the thing down, and then put the clamp on the hose. Don't forget to put that hose on the end here. Just be careful not to break anything. Then come in with your longer than a well rope extension and socket. Gosh, I just got antifreeze everywhere. I pulled that soaked rag out that I had stuck in the end of that freaking hose. And I shouldn't have because now I just made a mess. You, you should be more organized when you do stuff. I'm just telling you right now. All right, there's the socket. Now on this one, especially, because it's plastic, all you want to do is firm these up. You do not want to go tight with them or you'll crack the plastic and then your new thing will be ruined. I kind of wish... They'd had a better system for this. I think this is kind of fragile, to be honest with you. There we go. All mint. Oh, it does. It is a clicky cap. Okay. 
Hell, I never re I thought I was making it too tight on my pickup. You can reuse the old cap. They will fit. I'm almost certain. Oh, yeah. They'll re they'll both fit. You can use whichever one you want. Probably ought to stick with the new one, but ultimately it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's not supposed to have more than 16 pounds of pressure in here, so if you've got enough pressure to blow out seals and stuff on your cooling system, you've got a problem, a bigger problem. So that's all there is to it. I'm just going to put the clamps on the hoses so nothing goes anywhere. And then all you got to do is fill this up, run the engine with the heaters on maximum. That will cycle all of the coolant through and get all the air out of it. This will probably turn brown for a while because there's probably some gunk left in there that I couldn't just get out with the flush water. But over time, it will it will kind of break the rest of that scale and whatnot loose. And then I'll show you over on my pickup. Hi, Kevin. So on mine, you can see it's kind of getting discolored through there. I'll step out of the light so you can kind of see. It's not perfectly green through there. It's kind of brown. That's because as this thing has run... It's breaking loose the rest of that scale and crud, and it's getting mixed in. So you're supposed to change your uh, antifreeze every 30,000 miles, flush the whole system, things like that, and then refill it. So in another about another 9,000 miles on this, I will probably drop this. I'll take this tank out. I'll flush everything out again, and uh, and then I'll put new antifreeze in, and it should be good as long as I keep doing that. On the excursion, I have no idea how long it's going to be before this new fluid starts turning brown. But we'll... uh. Can I open the hood one-handed? Oh, yes I can. Uh-oh. Uh Lift stabilizers might be going out. Alright, so it's been a few days. Everything's everything's fine on this, but it's been a few days, and I forgot to film an ending for this. So, a couple of little uh, quick things. Make sure you face your thermostat the right way, because I didn't. I mean, it'll still work if you don't face it the right way. It'll still cool and everything, because this never got overheated. But it is also wintertime, so it could be that the engine itself never got hot enough to open the thermostat to begin with. I don't know, because the, the temperature sensor's right there. But anyway... When you put this on, it might leak a little bit from right here in particular, like right down in there. It might drip. Run it for a few minutes and see if it stops. If it doesn't, then adjust your hose and, and tighten that up a little better. On a new hose, it takes a minute for it to, you know, kind of like seat and seal. So you may have it drip a little bit there. It's not a big deal. The engine will burn it off. You don't need to worry about it too much. Uh, I mean, if it keeps dripping, you know, after a few minutes of running it or a little bit of running it, once the engine's hot and everything, if it's still dripping, yeah, then you should probably, you know, fix that. But otherwise, just let it do that for a few minutes until the hose seals against the housing and you should be fine. When you're filling this, I put in about three, three and three quarter gallons and it was like all the way full on the degas bottle. Put about three gallons in then run it for, you know, a dozen miles or so, and then check it again. In my opinion, you should not fill it above the minimum mark on the cold fill, because sometimes if you open the cap, it's still pressured up, and it'll go ahead and fill up some more, because it's got pressure on it, but if you release the pressure, it'll just kind of raise the level a bit. So just don't, don't overfill this. It's not hard to drain it back out, but that's a waste of antifreeze. So in my opinion, don't fill it below that minimum mark. And then once you get at least three gallons in this, three and a half, you'll be fine to run. Even if it's a little low in this reservoir, it shouldn't hurt the engine any. Just keep an eye on your temperature sensor or your uh, temperature gauge and make sure that it's not getting too hot. It should stay in the same range that it was before you did all this, if it was operating normally before, that is. So that uh, that's pretty much everything I can think i mean like i said i just forgot to film an ending for this and biggest thing make sure that thermostat's facing the right way can't stress that enough i i forgot about that until i got done and i still need to do that but you know not worried about it right now so 
that should be everything you need to know. It's not hard to do any of this, as you saw in whole or in part. It is not difficult to do this. It just takes some time and a little bit of money, just like everything else. But if you stay patient, it shouldn't be too bad. You won't break anything. It comes off pretty smooth. It's a very non-invasive procedure. You don't have to take a whole bunch of stuff off and out of the way. It's one of the easiest things you can do to this vehicle. So I hope that helps somebody. And uh, if it didn't, well, I'm sorry. But if it did, that's great. And now you have another skill or now you have more knowledge and knowing is half the battle. So I will cut this here and I'll be back in the future with more stuff. So keep an eye out for it.